way. You've been written off, you continue to be written off, but how are you feeling ahead of this huge task taking on the Springboks in the World Cup semi-final? I think we're all really looking forward to it. And um, I think our supporters are looking forward to it, the players are looking forward to it. I hear about tens of thousands of people coming across this game in Paris. It's, 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 it's brilliant. Uh, we're, we're here in Paris, the first time the England team's got here through this tournament. I think... There's a special atmosphere, there's a special uh, feeling around being in Paris ahead of, the, ahead of this semi-final. Can those England fans make it like a home game for you in the Stade de France? Our, our sports have been incredible for us, from that first game of the tournament all the way through. And from what I was told post-game last week, the, the fans all came down to the front, all came down to the pitch side, they, they were loving it. And um, I hope that this, or every one of them is going to come over and cheer this team on. He's going to have a, a great weekend this weekend. You will be major underdogs. Can you use that in your favour? Well, we concentrate very much upon us. It's what we've done every single week. How do we develop and how do we progress as a team? And I think that's the central thing. I think this team has progressed um, through each, each week we've had through this tournament. We've built and we've built and we've built and whatever situation the players have found themselves in in the game is the, the players have found a way to get the result they want at the end of it and we know this weekend is, going to be, is, is different every game is different but I also know we've got a great group of players who care deeply about representing England and want to make sure they put in a, a performance they're all proud of and our supporters are proud of on Saturday night and how big is the belief that you can do this you can pull this off in the camp yeah, I think there is always belief that's strong in this team and I've sensed that all the way through since, since I've got involved again with this team there, there are players that have performed at the very highest of levels players who played knockout rugby finals rugby before and I think they can't wait for this, this occasion epitomised by the man next to me who um, just in, in the biggest of occasions, in, in the big, actually the big stadiums, he, he performs as, as so many of our boys do. Three changes to your team. Can you talk us through your thinking? Yeah, um, I think there's a few factors in it. And as ever, I go through the selection process, um, the rigour that I put to that in terms of how we wish to play, what we need to do, the strengths, um, the opposition, the opportunities on the pitch, um, assess all the players, cognizant of the. The, the travel we've had, the, the six-day turnaround and what we needed to do. And I think we're blessed here with a, a fantastic group of players, the, uh, the strength in depth, competition for places. And so I decided to make uh, some, some change between the starting team and, um, and the bench. And um, I think that the players are, are relishing the challenge ahead. Was Marcus Smith fit and available, or was that decision made for you by the HIA? No, Marcus was unavailable for selection due to the, the return to play protocol. And George Martin, what qualities does he bring? You know him very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've known him for for a few years now, from a, a, a very young man to seeing somebody now who looks at home on the international stage. He's um, he's come onto the pitch as second row and six in this tournament. He's started a game earlier in the tournament in the pool stages, and every minute he's been on the field, he has performed. And he's performed in some big moments as well, as, as I'm sure you relate, at key moments for the team. Uh, he's a, a young man who just embraces getting onto the pitch and giving everything he can for the team, a real, a real team man. Is he a big hitter? Does he embrace the physicality? I think the players across the board um, understand that that's the nature of international rugby. It's a physical game. And um, you know, we play against the number one side in the world this weekend. And we know that the intensity of this test match is going to be incredible. And I think that's why we're looking forward to it and all our supporters are looking forward to it. Owen, four years on, can you use any of those memories, those scars to motivate you this weekend? Um, this feels like a new, a new challenge. This feels like a new opportunity. Um, as you said, in four years, a lot, a lot, a lot happens in rugby. Uh, a lot happens in a week um, here. So... Um, we're, we're excited at the opportunity that's in front of us. We feel like um, we've we've obviously changed as a team. Uh, I, I imagine South Africa have feel like they've changed over over four years as well. So um, we understand what a, what task is is in front of us. What a good team we're playing against. What a what a well drilled team playing against. But uh, we're excited to get out there on the field on Saturday. 
And what can you take from that night in Yokohama? What did you learn and what can you take into this game? Well, as we said, that's, that's a, a long time ago now. Uh, we've, played, we've played each other a good few times since. Uh, and we're looking at what we can do here and now going into, going into this Saturday. Steve, in terms of um, the, the last two times England have played South Africa, it's sort of one all. So is that another reason to have optimism for, for this? Because obviously a lot has happened in the four years since the last World Cup. So to sort of characterise it as a follow-on from that wouldn't, wouldn't, be, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be right, would it? Because obviously a lot of water has gone under the bridge for both teams in, in those four years. And, and a lot has changed since the last time we played South Africa. There's a new coaching team in place here. So there's a, there's a number of players that uh, at different times moved on. Now and we're in a different context and then we're in semi-final of, of the World Cup. And we know what a top quality side they are. The, you look at the way they have built, um, not just into 2019, but then post-2019 onwards over this four years. They've built, added layers to the game. They've kept a core of players together and, and uh, brought other younger players through and built their level of experience. So we know what a top quality side they are and a great coaching team. Uh, what, what it means for us is we've got to be really well prepared and, but you've got to focus very much upon yourselves and that's what we've continued to do this week And just on George um, it, it strikes me that he's, he's also very influential in, in, the, in the scrum in a similar way to, to Ollie as well so is that another strength that he can bring to, to bear in this match? And the, the players, uh, he, the players, the front row boys, they, they always talk about what they're, they're giving the second row some pretty direct feedback on how much weight they're giving. Um, they're usually pretty positive about the weight George Martin gives. Um, he's, and I, I think he's a young man, very athletic young man, um, but he is one that every challenge, since I started working with him a few years ago, every challenge I've um, kind of put in front of him or he's wanted in front of him he's just embraced it and, and ripped right into it so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him go he's, he's been played real well the minute to stand on the field through this tournament and Owen what, what would your message be for the team for this match um, is there something that fairly simple that you know you could share with us that you'll, you'll kind of deliver to them in, um, in, the, in the final you know build up to this well we've just talked about Bruce, isn't it? about about um, trying to get the best out of ourselves in these occasions. Um, it's not necessarily uh, anything, anything new, anything uh, out of the ordinary. Um, but as I said, Steve, as Steve's already alluded to, there's, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of players in this in this team that know how to win big games, um, and we're looking forward to that opportunity on Saturday. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Um, you've talked about the importance of game management in this tournament to getting the team in the position to win a game, particularly in the fourth quarter. What's the specific challenge that South Africa posed you um, and how you, t you embrace that, and particularly with the way they use their bench? Yeah. So I think the, the South Africa pose um, a, a great deal of questions uh, in the game, a great deal of challenges, as, as you'd expect from the number one side in the world. I think they've got that traditional um, power, set piece power that they've they've had for a, a long time. Um, I think then they've their contestable kicking game is another great strength of theirs, and and I think one thing they've laid to their game over these last four years has been their their ball movement and to the speed they have on the edges. Now, you know that, that we're going to have to combat those things to make this a, a contest. They impose that upon the opposition. And then they, they also have a, a squad that is jam-packed full of power and size. So that you know that they're, they've got a good team to start and they've got players coming onto the bench who are, who are very strong. I also think we've got a pretty strong team as well. I think we've got a pretty strong bench. Um, we know it's a fantastic challenge against the number one side in the world. Um, I think it's a challenge we're eager to, to, to get into. And uh, the changes you've made to the, to the pack particularly, is part of that a reflection of, of who you will have on the bench at, at a particular time in the game? Have you looked at that? Because you know you could have yeah. gone 6-2, but I don't know if it's the... The personnel, the players, their their particular physical attributes at that moment in time. So um, I considered all the, the permutations whether five three or six two, and uh, the other thing I consider, and this is much more now over the over the period of time, is understanding the eight, the eighty minutes 
that you need to ensure that the, the importance, as we've seen in our most recent games, the importance of Q4, the importance, we saw that last week, we saw it the week before, so having the players that are on the bench, they're the right players to finish the game the way you want to, and understand that you've got the players starting, the, the right players to start the game, and that's always the, the, the balance. I think then, with that, I'm always looking physically at where all the players are at, and I feel this is the right combination of players to start and players to finish um, to, to, to get the performance we need. Steve, was it, um, was it helpful, Razzie, lending you a hand to pick your team earlier in the week? You've lost me, I'm sorry. Razzie Erasmus named your team on, on Tuesday for you just as, a, just as a, 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 a little helpful hint and tip. You didn't, you didn't see that. Uh, did he get it right? No. Okay. <laughs> so can I ask? Can I ask <laughs> Sorry. Can I, yeah. No. So can I ask you about? We, you've already talked about George Martin specifically. Um, just, just Joe Marler starting uh, ahead of Ellis yeah. um, today. You've given us some some indication. But just talk a little bit more about the thought behind behind the loose head selections. Yeah. I think we've got three brilliant loose heads in here in this squad. Um, I think um, Ellis has been terrific. And I thought he played really well last week. Um, I think um, Joe coming back into the squad after some time away has been also an incredible influ influence around the group. And we've got Bevan Rod as a younger player, but I would have no hesitation in, in Bevan being in the 23 this weekend. So it's a real competitive position. Going back to the previous question, for me it's always about the balance of who's to start and who's to finish and understanding that we need an 80 minute performance that is the start's crucial the 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 end is vital and that's we understand that and i think the i'll say our bench the performance of our bench through this tournament has been very very good what what i don't understand though is why you would necessarily start with joe ahead of ellis this weekend is joe a better scrummager does ellis offer more in the final quarter as you call it what Give us yeah. give us an insight into that as much as you can. Yeah, and um, the I think both of these players are, are top quality scrummages, and I think that's really important given the strength of the South African scrum. We know that they they're rated as the best scrum in the world. Uh, every piece of information has them as the best scrum in the world. So we we know that we're going to need to scrum well throughout the game. Um, and I felt not just at the loose head, but understanding the, the combinations of the two sets of front row forwards that we have, I think that's, that's also important. As I say, I thought Ellis was terrific last week. I think that, that Joe to start and Ellis to finish is the right combination this week. Great, thank you. Uh, Owen, you mentioned the big game players that you have in your squad, but for a few of the guys, this is going to be their first experience of a World Cup semi final. So, what words? Have you had for them, and what have you said to them about what semi-final week looks like, and what to maybe expect Saturday night as they get to the stadium? Well, it's not—it's not just from me. For a start, there's, there's a there's a lot of people with a lot of experience in the squad, um, and we're we're pretty open. We're pretty open here. We're pretty uh, open with our experiences. Open open with how we're feeling going into going into this week, and what we try and do is get on the same page as a team and make sure we're. Um, on the same page, so we can help each other out during the week and build and build into having a performance at the weekend. And uh, there's, a, there's a fair bit of excitement that comes with that. Steve's touched on the kicking battle as well. You'll likely find yourself in the backfield alongside Johnny Elliott and Freddie returning. So, how have you guys analysed South Africa's kicking threat and how are you going to look to deal with it? No, as Steve says, they're obviously uh, they've been that's been a massive weapon of those for for years and years now. Um, They've they've progressed it. They 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 go a, a lot of contestable kicks, but not not just off nine. Um, they go across they go across field quite a lot now, and the lethal off 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 turnover at times, um, going to kicks and and getting the balls that are on the floor. And as you saw last week against France, scoring scoring a good few opportunities off the back of that. So um, we've done our we've done our work. We've 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 obviously come up with our plan to to. To negate what we can from them, but also to be able to attack it ourselves. Does Freddie returning just give you a bit more assurance in that area, given his reputation? Well, I think the the thing about Freddie is um, everybody knows how good he is in the air, and everybody knows what a what a fantastic player he is in in general. But it's it's the want to do it. Um, 
the want to, to be in those battles, the want to go and get the ball back for his team, the want to diffuse um, what's what's coming our way as well. And uh, that's that's he's one of the best in the world at it. And that's the way I would be if, it, if I was him as well. Steve. Hello. Um, in the current rugby, it's not very common to watch uh, Hooker playing 80 minutes per game. Uh, Jamie George did it during the two last game. Does it mean he's, he's different? He's not human? Or um, you, you don't trust Theodan, who, who are maybe too young for this kind of, of fight? So, um, first thing I say is that Jamie always. Uh, Jamie's the engine he has is phenomenal and I know he's got he's an incredible runner so I know from a, a fitness point of view Jamie's always got 80 minutes and I want all my players to be able to play 80 minutes and, and it's whether I choose to play 80 or not and I think one of the things that's not often talk, talked about with Jamie is uh, what a great leader he is and I think we've got a, a, um, an excellent density of leaders within our squad. And I think there's been some moments in the last couple of games that he's been really influential, and from a leadership perspective as well as his own personal performance. And I felt the right thing to do to keep him on the pitch, but I'd want all my players to have the ability to play 80 minutes. Hi, Steve. Could you just explain to us what happened with Marcus over the last few days? Was he ruled out yesterday, or was it earlier than that? It was, it was earlier. It was earlier in the week. Um, he he took the knock in the game, as, as you're well aware. He um, passed the first parts of the HIA process, which meant you know he finished the game, and then the subsequent parts of the HIA process, and and one part of that he he did not pass, and then it was confirmed to me he was unavailable for selection, and um, yeah. Is he is he okay? Like he obviously yeah. disappointed to miss such a big yeah. game. Um, he's he's. Perfectly fine in terms of um, symptoms, and he doesn't feel anything. And um, to understand, we'd expect him to be uh, available for selection and after this weekend. There's been after the South Africa play France. There was a little suggestion that South Africans might have been fiddling around with the HIA system and possibly trying to rest some of their players. Have you noticed that, or have you flagged that up to World Rugby, or are you concerned about that at all? No, uh, we've got a. Um, a match officials team that's world class led by Ben O'Keefe I'm sure everybody ar around the pitch as well will be having every bit of process in place as, as would be so there's no no issues there from my perspective I'll, I'll say again from Marcus on the situation you're there is just reiterating it's right to reiterate that player welfare is 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 critical and, and vital to us can, I haven't articulated it well there about Freddie but can you just put in your own words about what he brings from fullback obviously you coach him at Leicester and you, everyone has seen it but what do you see when he's going for those high balls um, so my first game coaching Leicester uh, was going through the selection process and um, this young man Freddie Stewart that I'd not known a huge amount before but I'd known him from England under 20s and um, he was new to the squad I think he's just tr from school and out of the academy and the, they come into the first game and I'm deciding who to play at 15 and I didn't pick him and um, post game and I reflected on that selection process as I said I do whenever I go through the rigour of the selection and I thought so, it's a game, it would, he's ready for this and I watched his, um, his face when I told him he wasn't picked in that game in 2020 and um, I thought, this guy wants the challenge, this guy wants him, this guy's he's ready for it. Doesn't matter how old he is, or he's ready for it. And throw away the next week, you put him in. And from that point on, he has just been brilliant. Um, everything that's been challenged to everything you, you ask him to get better at, he goes and gets better at. You know, you saw him today, you'd have seen him straight out on that field trying to improve right from the start of the session, even before the session. He's working hard um, to improve as a player, always is, and, and that's great credit to him as a and his professionalism. Was that our conversation last week? Was, did you see that same face as someone so disappointed um, to miss the course final? Yeah, I think that every player wants to wants to play, and I and I understand that we've got a, we've got a really competitive squad here. Uh, we've got 33 players uh, that that all want to play, 
Um, Marcus and Fortune was ruled out uh, this week. We had 32 players otherwise fit and available for selection, and everybody wants to play, and that's that's a great sign about the health of, the health of this squad that, that, that people are so desperate to play. And then, if not selected, they go and help the team prepare, and that's exactly what Fred did last week, along with all the other players who weren't selected. Martin, I, yeah. and Chris, and I, I see over here to your little right, just sorry. Um, when Ben was in a few minutes ago, he said that you prophesied these games, that you predicted from that that it might be South Africa. Is that right? And also, when did you sense that that was going to happen, that things were going in the right track from your side's point of view? Yeah. Well, I think we, uh, before the tournament started, way back in July, when I talked to the players, I talked about the, what we can control, and I talked about the journey. I talked about the experience I'd had talking to other coaches from rugby and from other sports that had been to uh, World Cup, uh, World Cups, and, and how they'd approached it. And one of the big things is it just about is making sure that you build your team, make sure you continue to build the strength of your team and how you want your team to play. You can't concern yourself about anybody else and laid out the path of what we've got to do. And it was very clear to the path we've got to do. And as I talk about the, with the, the, the short-term nature of it, has meant we've had to go and get stuck straight into building this team. And the players have embraced that and they've got on with building this team. And here we are today, a couple of days out from a World Cup semi-final against the world number one team. And what a position to be in. Can I just quickly then ask you as manager, coach, you as captain, what it will mean to send a team out to a World Cup semi-final, to lead a team out for a World Cup semi-final. The, the feeling, the emotion, the sense of, I guess, pride and, and camaraderie you, you have. Yeah, no, it's obviously a massive honour. Um, we've already talked about how the crowds have been building over the course of this tournament and how, how much support we have uh, coming out this weekend and what that means, what that means to them. We've seen this team build over the past. Um, when when did we first get in now, Steve? July, start of July. Start of July. Um, we've seen this team build, and and it's been through a lot over that time. And uh, as as has already been said, and uh, as you've just mentioned, we've we've got a fantastic opportunity in a in a World Cup semi final on Saturday night. And uh, as I said, it's a massive honour to to walk out in there, and we, and we want to want to embrace that challenge. Christian for Owen. Uh, you know very well the Stade de France, but you won't have the opportunity to train uh, ahead the, the game. Uh, is it a problem for you? I think you're kicking game. No, it shouldn't be. No, um, we had the we had the same we had the same um, had the same case last week, and we never I've never played at the uh, the Stade Velodrome before, so. Um, it's, it's, it's no different. So it's a, hopefully the balls are, balls are pretty similar. Yeah. Steve, hi. Um, what, what sort of in... Oh, Christ, that's, that's not good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll start again. Steve, hi. Um, what sort of insight has Alid Walters uh, managed to offer you this week, having been involved with the box in 2019, about going, what their mindset is going into a game against England, their attitudes, just any little detail he can provide that's given you a little advantage? Well, I think one of the, the really great things, and, and as I reflect on it, is that I managed to prize him away from the spring box at the start of 2020. And, um, and join us at Leicester and then now join us at England. So, as Owen's described, four years is a long time in rugby. Four weeks is a long time in rugby. So, I think they've, they've changed there. Whilst the, the coaching team has been consistent um, with Razi and, and Jacques and Felix, they've, they've changed. So, uh, we understand that and, and he's fully invested in, in helping us build our game. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.